All right, everybody, thanks for joining us today. We have tight end Zach Koontz. Um, first question is going to, going to go to Mark Brennan with Fight On State. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, Zach, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. You got me? Greg, do you hear me? I could hear you. Hold on just a sec. It looks like he may have signed off. <laughs> Can you hear me, Zach? Yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. I appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Of course. Hey, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about your weight uh, since you got to Penn State. Can you tell mm -hmm. us where you were height and weight-wise when you arrived on campus, where you are now, and how did you get from point A to point B, especially weight-wise? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that, that was a big emphasis uh, for me, uh, especially coming in. I mean, everyone has to get a little bigger and stronger out of high school, but I think I was uh, probably around 220 pounds or so uh, when I got here, and I'm, I'm around uh, 252, 254 right now. So um, you lose a couple pounds after a workout, drink a couple waters, and it's it's right back there. But um, but I'm, I'm gaining a ton of weight. Um, feel a heck of a lot stronger. Um, the, the the strength staff and nutrition staff's done a great job with me uh, in creating a plan, a personalized plan of um, my caloric intake. Uh, what to take before a workout, what to take after a workout so that I'm not burning uh, my muscle and um, you're just you're, you're burning uh, the meals you're eating pre-practice and then you're recovering post-practice. Next up is Audrey Snyder with The Athletic. Hey Zach, thanks for your time. Of course. I'm curious, I know a lot of guys have talked about working out at state high and kind of you know quarterbacks being able to throw to receivers there, those kinds of things. Um, have you been going through those workouts with Sean? And if so, what has that been like? Um, we kind of uh, sometimes will talk amongst each other of, of times like we can meet up. Sean's actually a next door neighbor of mine. So um, we're, we're eat, um, we talk a lot with each other and, and some, some of the receivers and things. So we, we have a time where in, in our schedules it's open, we'll meet up and kind of just get some work in, get familiar with each other, um, kind of get back in the groove with one another. Next up is Rich Scarcella with the Reading Eagle. Good morning, Zach. Thanks for doing this. Zach, how would you assess your progress at Penn State to this point? Uh, would you say main, mainly just from a football perspective of – of, of body weight, or do you mean more of the um, knowledge just, of the game? Or? Just is this about the the progress? I mean, where when you decided to go to Penn State, mm -hmm. um, have you met with surprise? Has anything been surprising? Are you about where you thought you'd be? Uh, comparative. I'm, I'm talking football only here. Okay. Oh yeah, Com coming out of high school, I mean, every, every player's goal is is obviously to play right away, be a true freshman, be a starter, and mm -hmm. and especially coming from kind of a hometown, uh, only an hour, hour and a half away. Um, I had a brother that played here uh, under Joe Paterno and then Bill O'Brien. So, and then as Coach Franklin was taken over, I had another another brother after him that was kind of uh, being recruited here and there. So. From a younger age, even like eighth grade, I kind of got a good feel, and I've always kind of known what Penn State was about, and so it's always comfortable coming here. And with my personal process, um, I'm happy with where I'm at. I mean, everyone wishes they could do a little better and find some things to improve upon on. Um, but uh, from a football perspective, obviously, I wish I could play a little bit more, but uh, other players in my room have shown that they have the ability to, to perform and do that on a consistent basis. So it's, it's my job to, uh, to improve upon my own game uh, so that I can earn that trust from the, my, my play, uh, the other players and my coaches so that I can have that opportunity as well. Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Zach. Good to hear from you. Good to hear from you too. Um, we, we talked a bit this offseason with, with Tyler Bowen and, and not too long ago with Pat Fryermuth about the, the competition to fill Nick Bauer's role as the, as the next tight end on the field behind Pat. Um, the focus has been on you and Brenton Strange. How has that competition continued this offseason despite the lack of spring practices and, and just the, the different circumstances? We've, we all figured spring ball was going to be a, a crucial time for both of you to make your case. Mm 
Well, uh, the tight end room, especially, we're all very close with each other. And uh, we all know we're all, n we're never opposed to friendly competition and pushing one another. So um, I push Brett and Brett and pushes me. And then the same thing with Pat. Uh, we, we learn a lot from Pat and we just kind of just go about our workouts, doing our thing, pushing one another. And then when the time comes for that decision, I'm sure uh, T will make the right choice. Hello? Sorry, I was muted. Nubias Wilborn, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Go ahead, Nubias. Hey, man, how's it going, man? Thank you for doing this. No, of course, thank you. Good. Um, question from there, just overall with football, when – two things. One, was the last time you wore even shells and helmets? And how much do you actually miss putting on that equipment in that way? The last time we had them on – uh, geez, it feels feels like it was almost during the season, end of the season at the the bowl game, because uh, didn't get that that spring ball experience, and and honestly, I, I miss I miss it a lot. Uh, you miss it more than you think, because everyone's like, oh, at first with the COVID, it's like we get one week off. It's like, all right, we'll take a little a little extra extended vacation, but I mean, the week after that you already start to miss it and you, you forget what it's like and just going out on the field now uh, doing workouts, you, you miss being out there practicing and in the moment you, you want to, you want to hate it because how hard it is and everything. But, but in the end, it's, it's so, it's so worth it. Uh, I'm so rewarding just going through that uh, with your teammates and, and, and everything with that. So. Uh, Zach, this is Greg Pickle from Penn Live. Greg unmuted me, so I'm just going to go ahead. Um, do uh, what are you most excited about with Coach Sharaka's offense, and where do you guys think you are in terms of being where you'll need to be for the start of camp compared to say a normal year? Mm -hmm. Well, spring ball obviously is is a great time to uh, work on some some things that that you probably wouldn't change maybe in season. You have a little bit extra time to to tweak some things, especially uh, learning a new offense. But I think our offense has done a tremendous job, and I think Coach Shiraka and and all the other position position coaches have done an awesome job at, of preparing us and over preparing us and over preparing us and over preparing us. Especially Coach Bohan. Um, I, there's not a stone unturned with the new offense um, as far as in the tight end room. Um, we're very detailed in everything we do and detailed about every whether it's three steps, whether it's four steps. Uh, it's very detailed in what we do because we've had that extra time um, because it's just been meetings. We haven't had that muscle memory of going out there and doing it. Um, but I, I think the offense is in a great position going into the season. Donnie Collins, Times Tribune. Hey, Zach, thanks for doing this. Um, last year, tight ends were, were especially important. They, a lot of two tight end sets in, in, in the running game. How how prepared do you feel you are to kind of step into that role uh, from last year that, that Nick Bowers had? And, and what was that process like to become a better blocker for you? Uh, well, it, was, it was very different for me coming out of high school because I, I basically was, a I guess, a glorified wide receiver more than more than just a, a tight end, the, a true tight end. But um, I feel like the position as a whole has kind of transformed a little bit from just a nose in the dirt player to more of an athletic receiver type but um coach bone has worked a ton with me on on blocking coach franklin's been working with me as well when i was on, um on the d squad uh, my my freshman year when i first got here it helped me humble myself especially coming out of high school i learned a lot i think a red shirt year was great for me and, and learning a lot and giving me that extra time to put on weight because not a 220 pound uh, high school kid in there anymore and got a little more a little more weight to me, which is definitely going to help a lot. Uh, it helps with your, your confidence, your movements, and your strength overall. Um, but going into this season, I feel a lot more comfortable, the best I've ever felt from any year past. You just want to improve year after year. And Bowers did a great job of uh, 
of kind of solidifying that role for him and, and being a great blocker and being a guy we could re rely on when we needed him. And so it's it's my job to step into that role and uh, get get the job done for the team. John Salber, Center Daily Times. Hey, Zach, what do you see the role of the tight end being in the new offense, and how do you think that role suits you? Uh, I see us being a playmaker. Uh, I always, I always kind of, kind of see that role for ourselves. Uh, I know what our room is capable of, and I think we're the most talented tight end room in the country. And I, there's no doubt in my mind about that. I, I think we've only scratched the surface of what we're capable of doing. And um, I think the new offense does a great job of implementing the tight end, uh, whether it be a specific play for the tight end. Um, second progression, third progression, whatever it is. I, I think uh, Coach Sharaka is, is excited about what he has at the tight end position here. And um, maybe in years past, he wasn't able to uh, have that many playmakers in this position. So I think the offense for us um, going into it this season is going to be real exciting. Mark Wogan-Rich, SI.com. Mark, you there? We'll come back to Mark. Let's go to Jack Washer, WTAJ. Hey, Zach. How much has your life kind of changed away from uh, football in terms of, you know, you guys have been, been back on campus for a month, just outside of workouts, just in this COVID world. How has your life really changed? Oh, well, it's definitely been different. I mean, summers up at school are a little more uh, relaxed because a lot, a lot, there's a lot less students up on campus, so it's it's normally pretty empty and still kind of the same here. But um, my roommates and I, and and all my teammates, we've been emphasizing social distancing, wearing our masks, and um, only really going out when we need to, and not and if we're if we are around other people and we absolutely can't avoid it is. Uh, to practice social distancing and to wash our hands, use hand sanitizer and, and our, our, uh, our health staff, nutrition staff and, and everybody, they've done a great job of uh, really telling us the best ways to practice social distancing. Uh, if we're in certain situations, how to act and just really the best things we can do to keep ourselves healthy, keep our teammates healthy. All right, we got time for another round of questions. Uh, let's go to Mark Brennan, Fight On State. Zach, you talked about uh, putting on the weight. I wonder how that impacted your speed and quickness. Uh, can you tell us what maybe some of your uh, most recent testing numbers were? Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't remember the exact time we were in the last 40s, but um, I'm actually jumping higher than I've ever jumped before. I'm running faster than I've ever ran before. Uh, when our testing numbers, I think my last vertical was like, 38 or 38 and a half and my 40s are I'm right at four six uh I think my last one was four six over four six two so and I'm still dropping um I was definitely slower in high school and um it's weird how I keep gaining weight keep getting stronger yet and still jumping higher running faster than I was when I was lighter so I think the weight's working well for me uh it's going where I need it to and uh it's helping me perform better Audrey Snyder, The Athletic. Zach, you mentioned being neighbors with Sean. Um, imagine that has to help your connection with him. Uh, mm -hmm. What's it been like during these times, just trying to figure out, get everybody on the same page, like you said, while you know, adhering to distancing and all those sorts of things? How are you guys able to do that, even when you're outside of Haluba Hall? Um, well, again, like I said, and Andy Munnam's done a tremendous job of telling us what uh what to do uh guidelines to abide by and um with sean being a neighbor uh we we're all pretty cautious we were cautious around each other when we first got on campus because we once we first got tested we kind of stayed put and then once we started to get the negative results and um we were a little more comfortable going around each other and we, we won't go around each other if, if we know they've they've left state state college or been around people where they they may uh, be infected with the virus. So we've done a great job um, of maintaining distances when we needed to. And then now that we're allowed to kind of get back into it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more and more each week, 
Um, and plus in today's age of technology, it's never too hard to keep in touch with one another. So we, we've definitely kept that up in, in our team meetings. We always have our faces in the cameras uh, so we can kind of interact with each other as, as best we possibly can. Rich Garcella, Running Eagle. Zach, what are your greatest concerns with the virus per, from a personal standpoint and also from a team standpoint? Uh, from a personal standpoint, obviously, uh, your own health, and because a lot of things you see is you see sometimes people are asymptomatic. Uh, sometimes people don't show signs when they actually do have it. So, I was worried when we were in quarantine at home. I was worried that maybe I would contract it somehow and then pass it on to my parents, where it, it may be more of an issue uh, for my parents who are a little bit older than me. <laughs> Uh, whereas a, a 21 year old, uh, maybe our immune system can fight it off a little bit better than my parents. Um, so honestly, from, from personal perspective, that was one of the biggest things for me. So that's why I was doing my best job to, uh, to abide by uh, the guidelines, practice social distancing and do everything I needed to do to make sure that my family was safe. And then to move to a team perspective, I think it's important that um, everyone as a whole and Coach Franklin's emphasized this time and time again, how it's important for us to be accountable for each other. And we will fill out a survey every single day if we're showing any type of symptom, um, if we've been traveling outside of uh, state college. And so we're really taking all the, all the necessary actions to make sure that we're all abiding by the rules that we need to be so that we can have a, a season this year. Tobias Wilborn, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Um, over the last couple of weeks, um, Obviously, you guys announced that you had the zero results so far. What do you think has been different maybe at Penn State in comparison to other universities that seem to have, like, a higher amount of um, positive scores, positive tests? Mm -hmm. uh, well, again, I can't speak on what another school might be doing, but, I, I mean, I know the just – Penn State athletes are uh, they're top of the line, and we, we all want to be the best in everything we do. I think Penn State has a great history in all their sports programs, and uh, if if you generally want to have a season, you want you want to be able to play and and have that opportunity. You got to take care of like like I said earlier, like when you were home quarantine, you you take that seriously, and then when you're able to come back, you take that seriously as well, and don't take it. Uh, don't take that lightly because all it takes is one person that can spread like wildfire. And I think all Penn State athletes have done a great job of that. Greg Pickle, Penn Live. Hey, Zach, any players that you've seen now that you've been around the guys a little bit more who came back in maybe more impressive physical shape than you thought they would or made big gains? Anybody come to mind from a physical standpoint? Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't seen uh, too, too many people, honestly, because we, we're all still kind of separated in groups. But uh, from the people I've seen, I think, uh, honestly, Smith Bilbert and Adiza Isaac, they're two guys that I haven't seen for a while, but I've been impressed with what they're doing and, and, and how they've been getting bigger. So, Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. Uh, go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, Zach, uh, before you and Pat enrolled, you talked about, you know, coming to campus and forming the best duo in college football at the tight end position. Mm -hmm. He's accomplished a lot in a couple of years already. You're looking to make a big move here in 2020. How mm -hmm. has his consistent presence with you going back to, to being commits together pushed your development? And what has it been like to, to have a firsthand account of, of him rising to such prominence in, uh, before his junior year? Well, honestly, Pat's done a tremendous job, and um, I mean, no, no one can deny that uh, he's been consistent. He's played well. He's 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 come up for the team when we needed him. And uh, for me, especially when we were coming out of high school, um, like we did talk about that being being that dynamic duo. And I think now's a perfect opportunity to display that. I think Pat's shown what he can do, and he can do even more. And I think it's it's my time to to kind of show w what I'm made of and what I'm capable to do. Donnie Collins, Times Tribune. Zach, what kind of standard has Pat set for, for you guys in, in the tight end room? And, and what's the most impressive thing about him? It doesn't have to be on the field. It could be off the field. But what, what, what are you most impressed with about the way he approaches the game and, and life and things like that? Well, Pat, Pat's got a great motor. Um, honestly, I can't, I can't think of a day that Pat's not uh, – 
whether after practice, for practice, past not in lash, getting better, whether it be an extra rehab session just, just so he can feel better going on before practice or after practice, taking care of his body. I think he's done a great job of setting the standard that you, you, you get out what you put in, and he, he's done a great job of um, putting the extra work, even though he, he could be like the best tight end in the country, he still has a chip on his shoulder that he needs to be better. And um, he takes that chip on his shoulder every day when he walks in the building. John Sauber, Center Daily Times. Zach, you mentioned how you've improved as a blocker, but what are the finer points of receiving that you've improved on in your first two years on campus? And, and sort of how have you gone about doing that with you being already an accomplished receiver in high school? Well, in high school, a lot of it is uh, my coach just going out there saying, hey, Zach, run a fade, and you're just bigger than the other guy. Uh, and that's just kind of how it goes in high school here and there. But, I mean, there, it's a whole different world when you come to college. It's not just being better than the other guy. Um, you still have – you guys still got to have that confidence that it's a 100-0 to zero ball. There's no 50-50 balls. It's me or it's no one. And um, just learning new routes uh, from what I did in high school, new concepts. Uh, new concepts you got like learning the offense conceptually rather than oh I have a post oh I have a slant whether, whether it be something simple like that it's it's never just about that you got to know uh, quarterback's launch point you got to know um, where the other receivers are on the field because it's not just a rinky-dink offense like someone might have in high school it's it's, it's a whole new level of it. Mark Wogan Rich are you there? I am got All me. Right, go ahead. I uh, appreciate it. Zach, you've mentioned a couple times how you think that this is your time. What does what do you think you can do in Coach Soraka's offense? And what benefits you about Coach Soraka's offense? Or what benefits do you get from Coach Soraka's offense? Well, it, it's it's new and anything new is new and exciting, right? So um I think it's it's something uh that all of us on the offense are excited about. Uh we're all we're all all in hundred percent. We're we're behind it, we support it. Uh, we're going to execute it to the best of our ability. And, and like I said earlier, um, I think he can implement the tight end gr uh, great wit, whether it be a play call to them. Uh, we're we're going to play off of, off of the tight end, uh, being a keystone in the blocking game, what, whatever it be, the tight end's there to uh, get the job done on offense. And I, I think Coach Caraca will uh, support that and um, reward a tight end here and there. So. Our last question goes to Jack Washer, WTAJ. Hey, Zach, what is one thing that you can't do right now away from football that you normally be able to do if we weren't in, you know, COVID times? Um, honestly, uh, ability access is, is obviously limited. And um, w when we go in there, it's almost like going through a maze. Uh, there's only – there's designated entrances. There's designated ex exits. And we all abide by those rules. So normally you can go in uh, pretty much whenever you need to, uh, whether it be get, get some get some water, get some Gatorades treatment, get some jugs work. So there, there have been little adjustments uh, that we all have had to make, but we've made those adjustments and uh, we're doing everything we possibly can to, to be ready, to be as ready as we would be if there was no COVID going on. All right. Thank you, Zach, for joining.